There were giants in those days, says our vulgar text. The Hebrew is Nephilim, equals fallen ones, reference being had to the southern zodiacal constellations. These giants were Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricornus, Aquarius, and Pisces, then below the equator. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. The fallen star in Revelation 9-1 is the constellation Ophiuchus, the serpent bear. That destroyer, winter, so named a badin in the Hebrew tongue. It is no other than Ophiuchus, who carries the sun into winter and unlocks the bottomless pit annually. The bottomless pit is nothing more than the southern hemisphere. The Greeks termed it the abyss, on their ancient celestial globes. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Turning to the heavens of 3400, or 3500 BC, we find the altar truly upright, and we see the smoke of the incense, imitated by stars in the rich streams of the Milky Way, which extend from the altar like ascending clouds, and wreaths of smoke, over the scorpion on one side, and over Sagittarius on the other. There are many myths and legends about the origin of the Milky Way, the crowd of stars that makes a distinctive bright streak across the night sky. Throughout the world, the Milky Way fired the imaginations of sky watchers who imagined a great celestial path or river stretching across the heavens. In the Babylonian epic poem, Enuma Elish, the Milky Way is created from the severed tail of the primeval saltwater dragon Nes Tiamat, set in the sky by Marduk, after slaying her. The Milky Way billowing up from Ara, is the smoke of the bottomless pit, and the abyss should be understood in its strictest sense as the southern hemisphere. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. The gloom spawns a swarm of sky locusts, that is, they are locusts which are not part of the earthly environment. These locusts do not devour vegetation, but behave like scorpions. Consequently, if they are not locusts of the earth, they must be metaphorical. The swarms of locusts are equated with the innumerable stars found in the smoke of the Milky Way, and are given the power of the scorpion, that is the sting of winter. This passage is undoubtedly referring to the constellation Scorpio, ushering in the winter season. We must also look back, and take notice of the centaur archer. Sagittarius is a constellation, that could be described as resembling a locust almost as much as a centaur. In modern star charts, observers are often directed to look for a subset of stars in Sagittarius, that resemble a teapot, and which could also be seen as resembling a locust. Although admittedly, outside of the revelation, no written record nor myth can be discovered pertaining to this starry locust. Nevertheless, one cannot deny the striking likeness it has to a locust. But only those men, which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. The Aries seal was an alchemical symbol related to early Christianity, that was typically worn as an amulet, or used as a seal. The seal typically bore the Greek letters, Alpha and Omega, and displayed the symbol of a ram. Astronomically, the seal of God, is the sun in Aries. In their foreheads, equates to, in their minds, not an actual seal on the forehead. This reveals a knowing, in the mind, that the sun will soon be resurrected from the depths of winter, and triumph in the sign of the Lamb, Spring. In ancient lore, Ares was known as the Lamb of Gad, or God, which represents the head or brain. And to them, it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. The duration of the locust assault is five months. This time indication is repeated in verse 10, forming an inclusion for a piece that describes the locust as scorpion centaurs. Furthermore, regardless of how Christian apologetics try to explain it, this period of time does not pertain to the duration of an actual locust plague. Given the imagery, it is certain, the five months relate to calendar duration. In Greek astronomy, months were named after the corresponding zodiacal signs. Now, since the locust stars behave like scorpions, there is a ready relation to that of Scorpio. And if we count the months by the Greek order, then the sequence is Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. These are the final zodiac signs of the annual cycle. In other words, these metaphorical locusts are to afflict human beings for the five months of the winter season, until the end of the year. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Men shall seek death, and shall not find it, relates to the burdens and torments of winter. 
the function of this statement is to underscore the absence of otherwise readily available things in times of hardship, and further emphasizes the dejection of the situation. Moreover, there is also a literary formula to be found with the statement of desiring to die, seeking death and not finding it. In Israelite documents, the phrase and grammatical structure is used in various contexts. German theologian Klaus Berger lists 25 instances of the formula. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And accepting the locusts as metaphors for the innumerable stars. Verse 7 is a direct portrayal of Sagittarius. For no other constellation is more prepared for battle than Sagittarius, the celestial archer, with his mighty bow drawn and aimed at the heart of Scorpio. The crowns of gold is the southern crown, Corona Australis, which lay between the feet of Sagittarius. While the Babylonian Sagittarius sports a peaked cap or visor, the Egyptian constellation wears a double crown, and the Greek archer, called the crown bearer, is a royal figure. A Greek replication of the crown is the wreath, Stephanos, and the Greek name for crown is Koronos, Latin, Corona. Astrologers said he dropped the crown while horse playing. Hence he should be wearing it. Hyginus states, Before its feet are several stars in circular form, which some say, was his crown, that fell while he was playing. And further, the centaur's crown has seven stars. As for, their faces being as the faces of men. This passage is blatantly obvious and self-explanatory, so there is no need for an interpretation. Moreover, as for the locusts, the author is simply adding pluralism to the obvious singulars. That being displayed in the use of the words, horses, crowns, faces, heads, and men, etc. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Some astrologists have rendered this passage as a reference to the constellations, Coma Berenices, and Leo. Sagittarius and Leo are both fire signs. Taking Leo, the house of the sun is the first of the series, and fixing it to the seat of fire, and continuing and repeating the series, fire takes a second position in Sagittarius. The triangle of fire had its angular points or summits in Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries. And hence, the connection of Sagittarius with the lion seemed plausible. Coma Berenices is an ancient asterism in the northern sky, but its stars are observable in both hemispheres. The constellation is visible throughout most of winter. Its name means Berenices hair in Latin, and refers to Queen Berenice II of Egypt, who sacrificed her long hair as a votive offering. Coma Berenices has been recognized as an asterism since the Hellenistic period. Eratosthenes called it Berenices hair and Ariadne's hair, considering it part of the constellation Leo. In Arabic astronomy, Coma Berenices was known as Al Dafir and Al Huba, forming the tuft of the constellation Leo. And here, an alternative interpretation will be given, which will reinforce that the hair of women and the teeth of lions are exclusively of astrological emblem. According to the records of the Assyrians, Babylonians, and Sumerians, the Nephilim god Nergal, son of Marduk, was considered the deity represented by the zodiac sign of Sagittarius. He was often depicted as a lion with a human head, and was the god of the dead, war, famine, and pestilence. The original Sagittarius is the divinity of the month, the solar Nergal. Nergal is represented as a lion, the solar animal, with a man's head. This explanation is also confirmed in the fact that Sagittarius is often depicted sporting a lion's skin, Sagum, which may be an esoteric, cat call of Sagittarius, taking over the starry throne, where Nergal once ruled. The ferocious teeth also convey a striking resemblance in the constellation Lupus, impaled on a spear by Centaurus, almost always bearing its teeth on modern star charts. The Lupus constellation lies in the southern hemisphere, between Centaurus and Scorpius. Its name means the wolf in Latin. The Greeks knew the constellation as Therium, a wild animal, and the Romans called it Bestia, the beast. In Greek times, the constellation was probably taken to represent a creature based on the Babylonian figure of the mad dog. The creature was a hybrid, with a human head and torso, and legs and tail of a lion from myth, and it was called Eridim, with Ur, referring to, a large carnivore, which could have been a lion, wolf, or a dog. To the Arabs, this constellation was known as Al-Fad, the leopard, and Al-Asada, the lioness. Most modern scholars believe the name Lupus as a wolf, came about by a mistranslation of the Arabic names. The translators of Aristotle have rendered panther by Lupus canaries. 
the constellation which we call Lupus, is named Nemer, both by the Arabians and the Syrians. Nemer signifies a panther, or a leopard. Thus, Lupus, is authenticated to have originally been a feline, before the wolf. Sagittarius is frequently illustrated wearing a lengthy sagum, cloak or pelt, wavering behind him. This item could easily be mistaken for hair, and rendered as such. Furthermore, the ancient Greeks more often than not, always depicted the centaur with long flowing feminine hair on their pottery and vases. A quick study of Grecian artwork will show it was customary to assign long hair to the centaurs. Moreover, in ancient Greece, long male hair was a symbol of wealth and power, while a shaven head was appropriate for a slave. The ancient Greeks had several gods, and heroes who wore their hair long, including Zeus, Achilles, Apollo, and Poseidon. Greek soldiers are said to have worn their hair long in battle. Whatever explanation stands correct, is left to the rationale of the viewer. In any case, the teeth and hair are definitely proven to bear an astronomical significance, and reveals that the author of the Book of Revelation, was well versed in astrology, and the star myths of other nations. And they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Named Neft, on the Egyptian sphere, Sagittarius, of the horse and bow, was called the armor bearer, of Osiris. In Sanskrit, Sagittarius is Donus, meaning a bow. The bow, arrows and breastplate were the typical implements of that warrior, and Donus was a symbol of royalty. Scutum, is a small constellation introduced in the 17th century. Its name is Latin for shield. Although Scutum is a recent constellation introduced on star charts by Melevius, it has long been known in China as, Tianpian. Coincidentally, the Chinese also associated these stars with battle armor, incorporating them into the larger asterism, known as Tianpian, that is, the heavenly cask. Cask in Chinese means a helmet or a coat of mail. Melevius was an acknowledged astro-mason, introducing such constellations as the sextons, and triangulum minus, which are blatant masonic symbols. It is in my opinion, he had foreknowledge of the armor constellation before his presumed, and credited discovery of it. And hence, the celestial armor, will be rightfully translated as the iron breastplate, and accredited to Sagittarius, just as the author did in the book of Revelation. And the sound of their wings, relates to the outstretched wings of the constellation Aquila, the eagle who once held the thunderbolts of Zeus. This constellation is found directly above the celestial armor, and the battle-ready centaur, Sagittarius. And there can be no doubt, as Aquilo, is defined as, a wind blowing from the north. Its name is derived, according to some, from Aquila, on account of its keenness and velocity. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Sometimes three or more constellations were combined to form one figure. The horse, the scorpion, and the bow gave birth to a centaur, holding a bow, and having a scorpion's tail, or Sagittarius. The scorpion tail is a remnant of much older Babylonian, Egyptian and Persian astrological myths. The conception in which Sagittarius and Scorpio were merged, perhaps even with other constellations. Along with such a centaur-shaped Scorpio archer, there was also Scorpio Man, a humanoid equatorial constellation, with a human torso, animal lower body, lion-footed, and scorpion-tailed. Around the 17th century BC, Mesopotamian boundary stones began to carry astronomical symbols, including that of the terrifying Scorpion Man. Many scholars identify this creature as the Mesopotamian precursor of Sagittarius, the archer. Scorpion men are featured in several Akkadian language myths, including the Enuma Elish and the Babylonian version of the Epic of Gilgamesh. They were also known as Akrab Uami Lu, or Gerda Blilu. The scorpion men are described to have the head, torso, and arms of a man and the body of a scorpion. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, they stand guard outside the gates of the sun god Shamash, at the mountains of Mashu. Not only does the author of the Book of Revelation, borrow heavily from the Old Testament prophets, Elijah and Ezekiel, but much of it is plagiarized ideologies, copied straight from the Hindu, Persian, Egyptian, and Babylonian star myths. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter.